What's up YouTube, it's Trey Martin from AthleteDocRehab.com. Today's video we're going to talk about one of the biggest mistakes I see high school baseball players do and what you can do so you don't make the same mistake. What's up guys, it's Trey Martin. Technically it's Dr. Trey Martin. I'm still not sure if I want to own that title or not. I'm a physical therapist by trade, but we did make us get our doctorates these days and you spend all the money on it. And some people are telling me, oh, you should go by the baseball doctor or Dr. Baseball, blah, blah, blah. I don't know if I want to own it or not. So let me know in the comments whether or not physical therapists should own the doctorate title. Um, I took a lot of classes with physicians and I realized those guys, hey, they work a lot harder for their degree than I did for mine, so out of respect for them, I just tell people to call me Trey. So anyways, getting to the point. Today I want to talk about a big mistake that I see baseball guys make that I work with. That is that they train their butt off all off season, which is great. They do all their arm care, they do all their strength conditioning, um, they develop power, they work on mobility, and their body is peaked by February. They're looking great, they're ready for the season. And the biggest mistake I see is they completely stop doing everything, guys. Like, this is a huge, huge problem that I even saw when I was playing college baseball at Trevecca. We had a great off-season training program, and then when we got to in-season, we were playing games, and there was no guided lifts. There was no, hey, go work out like this. Uh, we didn't maintain our results. And what you saw with my college team, and I see this with my athletes now, is we look awesome physically, um, you know, at college season, we were starting about February to March. Our guys were physically as strong as they have been all year for March. Well, here goes the problem. We didn't really lift in March. We didn't really lift in April. We didn't really lift in May. And then the end of May comes, we have conference championships. And that's when you need your body to be at its best. Well, you see deconditioned muscles, uh, deconditioned cardio. Uh, mobility has started to tighten up a little bit. And physically, we weren't as good of athletes as we were in March. And now we're trying to go play the biggest games of the year. And we're playing like as half the athletes that we were going into the season. So I see this a ton where guys have done a very awesome job off-season training-wise. They've worked with a professional. They've set up their own plans. They develop all this quality muscle mass. And they look awesome. And then they'll do anything. And if you're in Florida like I am now... These kids will play from February all the way and through like August, September even. And so it's been like seven, eight months. They haven't touched a weight and they haven't done anything for their bodies. And then unfortunately, like I said, as a physical therapist, I'll see these guys in September and they're like, hey, uh, look, my arm is killing me. I'll look at their arm and they won't have overhead mobility. Their lats tighten down all the way. They can't rotate fully back into external rotation. That's going to cause increased stress in the elbow. Uh, their leg strength is diminished, they've lost the ability to balance as good as they once did, their soft tissue doesn't look as good, their rotator cuff strength on a dynamometer is not looking as good. So I get to see them post after the fact, and my statement to you is this, if we just kept going in season and we kept training, then I wouldn't be seeing these guys with all these um, soft tissue issues and um, injury risk factors that look a lot worse eight months after um, that time period they spent at the gym. So the point being, what we need to do, both as uh, performance specialists, strength coaches, trainers, baseball coaches, pitching coaches, you name it, we need to have our athletes, and athletes, if this is you listening to this, you guys need to be on your coaches and say, hey coach, like, what can I do in season to maintain my uh, my, my physique, my athletic development. So now this is going to be a very broad overview. You need someone to develop this stuff for you personally. So if you need help, shoot me an email at Trey at athletetalkrehab.com. Um, and I'll get you set up a plan and, uh, take care of all of these things for you. You don't have to think about it. But generally speaking in off season time period, now we're able to train at a very, very high volume because we're not playing as much baseball, you know, recovery, we don't have to worry about going into the game with a, you know, super sore packs after benching a ton. So it's completely fine to train at a pretty high volume at a pretty high intensity and also the pretty high frequency. So your off season program may look like you're going five days a week, uh, 60 to 90 minute workouts, and you're pushing, you know, 70 to 90% one rep max. You're going pretty hard. 
And then as we get closer to season, so this will be December, January-ish, somewhere in there, you should start working on peaking as a your power ratio. So maybe you drop back volume, volume a little bit and you start working on optimizing power. So you want to develop the capacity. So this time in the off season, base strength, lots of volume. Next phase, December, January, we're working on power acquisition and layering that on top of the base of strength we've already built. And then in season, and this is the biggest drop off I see, everyone does the first two steps right and then they do nothing. In season, they just stop completely. In season, you're going to have to dial back your volume because you can't play six, seven, eight games a week and then go try to crush yourself in the gym. Not saying that, but you need to maintain intensity. By intensity, I mean if you are used to working out, say, uh, say you have a max deadlift of 405 pounds, and a normal working set for you is 315. So you're normally in the off season going to the gym, you're training four sets of eight at 315 pounds, and you're used to that. You built up to that, and you have the capacity to do that. In season, maybe it looks like you're still keeping that intensity at 315, but maybe you drop a set or two back to like two sets of eight. You want to maintain that peak strength and that peak power so your body is still peaking throughout the rest of the year. Maintenance is a lot easier than gain. So again, you don't want to beat your body up. You don't want to be going into the conference championships after doing like a heavy, heavy leg day. You've done a 90 minute Bulgarian split squat session with single leg RDLs mixed with Nordic hamstring curls. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying take the program you've done this off season and maintain by taking the same amount of work you're doing intensity wise, drop down the volume some and also drop down the frequency some. So instead of it being five days a week where you're doing really good full body splits, maybe it looks like you do three days a week um, and you hit your big meat and potatoes exercises. So maybe if you maybe if you're in high school or something and you guys are playing more towards the weekends, you're playing Friday, Saturday, Sunday often, then what you should look at doing is making your hardest lift day Sunday night, Monday morning um, at a lower volume, but keep the intensity pretty high. Also, another huge thing that I don't see athletes do in season enough, like I said earlier, they'll come in with this, uh, they'll have a lockdown lat, subscapularis, the muscle under here is tightened down, and the rotator cuff starts losing strength. Maintain your arm care routine in season. So make sure you get some soft tissue work through the lat, whether it be foam rolling, stretching out, something like that. Um, and then make sure you keep your bands going and even getting some like closed chain body weight stuff too. So like a decline plank or like a bear crawl, something like that, just to keep the rotator cuff strength optimized. Because what I'll see, I have this device called a handheld dynamometer. Um, and basically it's a little force gauge and you'll have an athlete push into it like this with this little force sensor here. A guy will start out the season pushing like 30 pounds of force on this thing, and then six months go by, you retest them again, and they're pushing, you know, 18 pounds. So they've lost 30 to 40 percent of their overall strength there. And how do you think that's going to help as a as a thrower as you throw and decelerate, and you've lost 30 percent of your breaks essentially? Uh, that's not going to be a good thing. So keep uh, keep up with your arm care, keep up with your cuff care, keep doing your band routines, um, dial back volume some of the gym. Because you want your body to, if we develop this in the off season, we want to still be here all season. That way, when you're going to that important showcase in August or September, you didn't start the year throwing 88 miles per hour, and now you're throwing 82 and your shoulder's on fire. You want to maintain that throughout. So I can't emphasize that enough. Keep training throughout the season. Coaches that are a little old school and parents will sometimes say, like, oh, no, like we shouldn't train in season. Weight training is dangerous. It's not. Just take what you've done, half it, drop 33% off of the volume, and keep going after it. So if you need help with this, shoot me an email, trey at athletic.rehab.com. I help guys like you develop and maintain arm strength, velocity, uh, power acquisition, and keeping you healthy throughout the season. That's the most important thing, too. You can't throw if your arms hurt. Be on the lookout for things like that, though, seriously. If you start noticing your arm range of motion starts to tighten up here, you can't quite get back as far as you once did with the elbow, or sorry, with the shoulder positioning, and you're starting to feel a little bit of tension through the forearm here along the elbow, go get it checked out by someone. It's better to get the soft tissue quality maintained and the strength maintained than uh, being on the receiving end of it waiting too long. So I hope this was helpful. Like I said, guys, comment anything in the uh, comments below if you have any questions about baseball performance and need help designing a good off-season slash in-season program. I'd love to help you out. Thanks for tuning in.